we're going to talk a little bit more about the metrics for eGrip and the dual algorithm. Uh, and I will give you some a resource uh, to get some more information about that as well. So uh, we'll list through the different metrics that are available, uh, the k-values. So as part of the algorithm, it refers to, which you probably saw in some of the configuration, uh, the it refers to the k values k uh, one two three four five, and they refer to different metrics that are available in eGrip, uh, kind of like in OSPF uh, how it can make its calculation for the best direction to go based upon these different variables. And the different variables being uh, bandwidth, reliability, things like that. So that's what we're going to go over here. So one of those metrics, uh, one of those k values. Uh, is bandwidth. So this is a default k value. It's enabled by default uh, and it's referenced in uh, kilobits per second. This is one of those things that uh, I keep harping on to set your bandwidth values in your interfaces. Otherwise, it will use a default reference bandwidth of 1.5 megabits per second, uh, specifically when we start talking about serial interfaces and wide area connections and such. Uh, it's imperative that you properly configure your bandwidth values if you're using these sorts of, uh, these sorts of dynamic routing protocols like OSPF and eGrip because they care. They care about those bandwidth values, or they care about those uh, uh, bandwidth values on your interfaces. So along a path to a network, uh, it will use the lowest bandwidth value uh, for this value. So uh, unlike OSPF, which adds up each link along the way, each bandwidth value uh, along the way to a destination to calculate uh, how much the cost is of that link, this instead will use whatever the slowest bandwidth is uh, to a destination. It will consider that the bandwidth of the connection. And the way it does uh, this calculation is it takes uh, 10 million, so 10 megabits, and divides it by the lowest interface bandwidth, and then rounds it down. So it really goes for the slowest of possible and then round it down as well. So it does 10 megabits, and then divides it by the uh, interface. We also have delay, which refers to uh, the amount of time it takes to respond across that connection, and it uh, is done in microseconds. So it's not milliseconds, but microseconds. And oddly enough, this one uh, takes the delay of each hop and uh, it adds them up so it's the sum and when it gets that sum of delays uh, it divides the sum of delays by 10 so I'll put that here divides by 10 and that's how it gets that delay value and we don't actually need to uh, have that there Another one of those metrics is reliability. And reliability is optional. Uh, it's not recommended uh, due to frequent changes in your topology that could potentially cause issue. But it is there and available if you wish to use it. And the w way reliability is referenced is it's a fraction of 255 so if you see a value of 255 255 that means it's a hundred percent reliable if it's one out of 255 well then it's you know very small <laughs> amount of reliability it's what is that uh, 0.2 percent something like that so uh, it's not reliable basically at all 
And going along that mindset, we also have load, which is also optional and is also not recommended due to potentially frequent changes in your topology. Especially if your links are changing the amount of load that's on them constantly, it's going to be constantly reevaluating things and it's not a, a good way of determining your proper path. That also uh, bases it off of the 255 value system. So the k values, uh, we have k 1 through 5. And the k values <coughs> uh, reference these different metrics. So we have uh, k 1, 3 reference uh, bandwidth and delay. Uh, we have k 2, which represents load. And I'll write them next to here. So we have k 1, and we have k 3. And we have K2, and uh, 4 and 5 are for reliability. When a K value is set to 1, that means it's on. If it's set to 0, then it's off. Pretty simple switch. Uh, by default, K1 and K3 are on. So bandwidth and delay. This is, I should have written this down here too. It's also default. K2, 4, and 5 are set to 0 by default. So that's why their uh, reliability and load are not turned on by default and thus they're also not recommended. Uh, so they're not part of the calculation unless you enable them. If you want to see what K values you have enabled, uh, you can do that with the show IP protocols. I know I showed that a few times. If you do show IP protocols, it will show you all the details about your different dynamic routing protocols uh, that are currently configured on a router. And in those details, it will provide you, if you're using eGrip, uh, the different key values that are enabled. You can also set some of the weights uh, for the different K values. You can make some more important than others. Uh, and you do that with metric weights inside the eGrip config. Metric weights, TOS, and then the K values. Uh, so you can adjust and, and manipulate the way the K values are uh, leveraged in your configuration. Uh, normally you can leave them by to default and just let it uh, do its configurations based on the defaults and you, you'll pretty much turn out pretty uh, pretty well uh, but if you need have certain situations where you need to you can do that you can also uh, do show interfaces which will show the different values uh, for these metrics on an interface uh, kinda like when I was going back to the whole set your bandwidth on your interfaces if you do show interfaces it'll show you your interfaces and then obviously what kind of reliability is on the interface what bandwidth is set to that interface uh, what the load is. You can see all those per interface with that command. So we'll touch on uh, dual here as well and some of the details of dual. Uh, dual is the diffusing update algorithm which I've mentioned and uh, it determines our best loop free path. And it also does this uh, backup path determination. There's a number of terms involved uh, with dual, and you have uh, some different uh, references to successors and distances and such, so we'll go over those. Uh, some of those terms are your successor. And what a successor is, is your neighboring router that's used for forwarding packets. So that's that whole uh, hello packets and uh, bringing up your neighbors. It's your successors, potentially. Uh, we have feasible successors. And 
and of course there's an acronym to go along with that. And that's your neighboring router that has a uh, loop-free backup path to the same network as a successor. And it also satisfies the feasibility condition, which we'll talk about. So basically your feasible successor is uh, your backup router for uh, for network, more or less. We have a feasible distance. And of course, we have to acronym, acronym that as well, your FD. Uh, that is the lowest calculated metric to reach the destination network. And then we have uh, a reported distance or an advertised distance. Uh, so write these out, reported or advertised distance, which is obviously uh, RD or AD, uh, which will be your total metric. So. Uh, the feasible distance is your lowest metric to a network. Reported or advertised distance is the uh, total metric to a destin uh, destination network. And finally, we have the uh, feasible condition or the feasibility condition, which I mentioned a minute ago. And the uh, feasible condition is met when uh, a neighbor's reported distance to a network is less than the local router's feasible distance. So uh, if it's a better way to get there, essentially, so it'll, it'll make, match that uh, feasibility condition that makes sure that it's a better path. You can show uh, some of the fine uh, detailed information about eGrip uh, by doing a few commands. Uh, and uh, those are through the show commands, of course. So we have show IP eGrip topology. And then we also have same command, but then you can do all links. And that'll give you uh, a whole wealth of information of what your router uh, understands about the topology that it's received from the other routers. Similar to the idea of the topology table of OSPF, but not quite the same. Uh, so if, when we have a NERIP topology set up, uh, go ahead and show those commands. And I, I may have that still running. Let me see. Okay, yeah, we do have it. Okay, good. Show IP grip topology. So that'll show your entire topology table for your autonomous system. And then we can also say all links, which will provide e even more information, which right now is the same on this router, but could potentially give you additional information. So this will give you your entire topology table for what it understands about its network. And one of the resources you can use for uh, eGrip is the Wikipedia page, actually. It has a good amount of information about eGrip, as well as a little bit of a ex config example. But if you go down towards the bottom, at least in the, value, the version that's currently up, it has an explanation on those K values uh, and the actual uh, algorithm the formula used for the algorithm to determine those uh, path costs. Uh, and you'll see here that it mostly adds them together and then multiplies it by 256 
Um, but depending on what you have, if you're using reliability, for example, it'll do some additional calculation with this multiplication here. It'll multiply the delay and uh, depends on what you have enabled as to which ones actually get involved. Uh, but this is the basic calculation for K values. And if you want to learn more about so, uh, this is a great resource for you, the uh, Wikipedia page.